Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Maysex back with another video. Today we're going to be looking at the wide receiver rankings. It's the 2.0 version. I recently released the running backs and the quarterbacks previously. So if you haven't already after this video, feel free to go ahead and check that out. I'll be honest with you guys. I'm not going to have enough time to get all the positions like I originally planned for prior to the draft because the draft is right around the uh, right around the corner from this recording. So that's not going to happen, but I'm still going to release everything because, hey, I mean, it's still prior to the NFL season for 2023. So I'll probably switch around the title and whatnot, but it's still going to hold weight and value. And if you really want to learn the rookie class, these are still video series that's going to be really informative for you. So without further ado, let's look at these receivers. I actually have six today. And we're gonna, just like usual, start from six, work our way to the number one ranked receiver in my overall ranking. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, at number six, we have Jalen Hyatt out of Tennessee, listed at six foot, 176 pounds. To be honest, before I get into it with Jalen, this probably is not gonna be the best wide receiver class in comparison to 2022, 21, and 2020. We've been spoiled the last couple years. Uh, there's definitely some talent in this class, but I don't really see any lock to be a superstar like I did in previous years. But like I said, number six, Jalen Hyatt. Deep speed, ran a 10-4 in a 100-meter dash, so he has the top-end speed. You watch his film, you watch his highlights, you're going to see him take the top off the defense over and over, even against Alabama. Five touchdowns. So regardless of what you may think of Jalen Hyatt, he, he's not a scrub. You don't just walk in, and I don't care what kind of offensive scheme you have, you're not going to walk in and score five receiving touchdowns against Alabama. He's also actually a good blocker, long arms. I thought he was much taller when I first saw him, uh, maybe the second game of the season, because his legs and his arms are so lanky. Very long wingspan, very limited route tree. Offense was kind of gimmicky, cookie cutter offense. Three releases all day. Um, he may be a one trick pony. Those are a lot of the red flags kind of lead to him being a one trick pony at the next level. With that limited route tree, I do have my concerns. Him being in the right system to really utilize his skill set. But hey, he, he can ball out and he won the Bolitnikov for a reason. All right, so Hyatt did fall compared to my 1.0 receiver rankings. Josh Downs stayed about the same at number five, five foot nine, 171 pounds. Josh Downs had a very productive career in the ACC, the contrary to Hyatt, who had the one year run at Tennessee. Josh Downs bought out right away as a freshman and continued to do so uh, through his junior year, a thousand yards every year. Very quick, agility. He's a very good route runner, especially on free releases. Uh, I feel he's an advanced route runner. Makes really good adjustments on the ball. Very good at contested catches despite his small frame at 170 pounds. A really good goal line threat. They used him a lot on the goal line as a trusted target to make plays and score touchdowns. I feel that that's a good sign especially with his size, you do wonder how high is his ceiling. Didn't have the best athletic score at the combine that you were hoping for someone that size. So the, the, the numbers and analytics aren't going to like that, but I still feel that because he can adjust to the ball, contested catches, especially poorly thrown balls, he's really good at adjusting at. I do feel that he could be one of the better receivers at this class but at the same time, I'm gonna put him at number five for right now. Number four. Now this may be a little controversial, but I actually have Quentin Johnston as the number four ranked receiver in this class. Six foot three, 208 pounds out of Texas Christian University. So Quentin Johnston, his highlight tape, you're gonna fall in love with him because he's a run after the catch type of guy. He has really good agility for someone six foot three. You don't see that as much. He, he moves and he's fluid like someone six foot or five foot 11. Probably one of the best after the catch receivers in this class. I think I'm gonna go ahead and say he is the best after the catch 
uh, receiver in this class. But with that, with his size, there are some things that you want to see more of. You do want to see him engaged and more interested in blocking. Very limited route tree at Texas Christian. I feel that they knew what Quentin Johnston did well, and they allowed him to do what he does really well. Uh, but with that, didn't really run any advanced routes at TCU. I've said before in the last receiver rankings video, I want to see more alpha. He can be very passive, especially against press or contested catches. Catches with his body a lot, and that I don't really like. And that does concern me because there were a lot of plays he could have made on that ball with it being a contested catch, but with him allowing the ball to get to his body, that's the difference on third and nine from getting a first down and continuing that drive and that DB getting a chance to knock that ball down. And when you're 6'2", six 6'3", six extend those long arms, shield off that corner who's more likely smaller than you and bully him for that ball. So I didn't really see enough of that and that does concern me and that's why I probably have him a little lower than the consensus with Quentin Johnson. But still, I feel that he'll carve out a good role. His ceiling to me is a number two receiver maybe a number three. I don't see him as that 6-3 X receiver that a lot of us are envisioning him to be. At number three, I have Zay Flowers out of Boston College. Five foot nine, weighed in at 182 pounds. Some of you have seen the videos, his transformation over, I believe probably the course of a few months, gained about nine pounds or so. Um, 173 to 182 or something along those lines. Uh, but despite his frame, he played primarily on the outside at Boston College, and I really like that. Um, played in a system where his route tree was a lot more advanced in comparison to Quentin Johnston. Um, a lot of catch and run situations, and he's very dangerous with his ball or with the ball in his hands. Uh, makes a lot of plays in traffic, which is what you want to see in the NFL. Those spaces between you and the corner is going to be very limited. And if you do have space, it's going to close on you very quick. So I want to see if you can catch the ball and engage and embrace through contract as well. Concern, he did have nine drops. The consistency of hands could be an issue, but we've seen time and time again, Deontay Johnson, even Terrell Owens, which by no means am I comparing them to T.O., but great players like that, you can still be really productive even if you don't have the best hands in the world. Uh, run blocking leaves a lot to be desired, but he plays with a ferocity and just a talent level that's just so fluid. To me, I'll be honest, he reminds me of Antonio Brown, um, and I like that he can play slot in the outside, so that's why I have him at number three. Number two, we have Jordan Addison out of USC. So last rankings, he was my number one. I've actually flipped him down to number two, which you guys know now who's my number one, but we'll get into that in a moment. Five foot 11, 173 pounds, 2021 Belitnikoff winner, 100 catches that year at Pittsburgh. I actually liked his Pittsburgh film more than the USC, just a different offense. But with someone of this talent, he still had a really great year his junior year at USC with Caleb Williams. Early breakout, as I mentioned, with Pittsburgh in the ACC. Uh, Kenny Pickett was his quarterback. Now, a lot of people have kind of been down on him the last few months since the combine. We were expecting a little bit more athleticism out of him, only being 173 pounds at 5'11". You do want to see that, and uh, this is a smaller wide receiver class, but his size... Does he have the size to be an alpha receiver, to be that number one receiver? Can he play on the outside? I personally think he can. I think that he has a lot of talent. Doesn't really have any major weaknesses. He can beat man, he can beat zone. He's excellent at short, intermediate, and deep routes. To me, that translates to success at the next level. He does have the potential to be a wide receiver one, but yeah, there are some concerns, but nonetheless, He's a baller, and I do expect him to be really good at the next level, and that's why he's number two. And at number one, you guys know where that leads off. That's JSN, Jackson Smith and Jigba out of Ohio State. Six foot one, 196 pounds. Definitely had a lot of hype coming into this season. 
injuries and then I think just a combination of also just wanting to get ready for the draft by the point that he was 100%. I just feel that he didn't feel that it was worth it to come back and hey, I respect that. But we're gonna basically go off of his sophomore tape off of 2021, Utah, Utah, Utah. Now, prior to the bowl game, the Rose Bowl against Utah his sophomore year, don't get it twisted. He was balling out, and that was with Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, two top 15 draft picks from last year's draft, and he led the team in receptions. That's even before the Utah game where he just balled completely out, you know, over 300 yards receiving. I mean, you could make his whole highlight take just off of that Rose Bowl Utah game just in itself. But elite agility was the most agile receiver at the combine. You know, his short shuttle, his three cones were, were just so explosive. Ran out of the slide at Ohio State. I think he can run on the outside, and I believe he was going to be an outside receiver. Um, now that Garrett Wilson and Olave was gone, didn't play very much this year. Uh, he was 98th percentile all time in agility at the combine. So questions about his athleticism and his speed and whatnot. Okay, he, he probably may have ran a four or five, but when you're that agile and then you look at him in college even, I mean, he still showed enough speed. He was running away from corners and, and linebackers, obviously, definitely the linebackers, but he was running away from DBs in college for sure. And yeah, there were some times where he got hawked down. You would have wanted to see him take that next gear, but especially for a receiver, speed is not the end-all be-all. Really, in the NFL period, it's not the end-all be-all because everybody has speed. You got to have more than that. And he has great hands. He understands defensive concepts. He knows where to sit in the zone. He's going to kill you if you zone him to death. And he's also talented and advanced enough in his route tree where he's also going to kill you man on man. So for me, he's the number one receiver, and I feel that he has the ceiling to be an all-pro receiver at the next level, and I do feel that he can play outside for sure. All righty. So these are my top six wide receivers for the 2023 draft class. Definitely some guys that have potential. We have guys that can be number one wide receivers. Is it as deep as previous years most likely not are some guys limited overall even beyond this top six that i have yes but with that said there's still guys that are going to have nice solid careers overall and i do see some guys potentially having all pro type careers if you haven't already please like and subscribe if you made it this far once again i deeply appreciate you it means a lot to me we're still on the road to 1k so definitely Give me a shout out, give me a, a comment, things that can help me get in the algorithm. And I'm not worried really about views or anything right now. It's just about giving the best content that I'm able to give and, you know, entertaining people that, that love football just like I do. Be on the lookout for future videos as well. We're still going to continue the series looking at every position. The draft will be here right around the corner. So. It'll be for the class. It just won't be pre-draft rankings, and that's all good. So I appreciate you guys. You guys have a good one, and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheat.